In this video, we'll analyze the Bounty Hunter. In terms of gameplay, the capability to make money, and the ability to roleplay. Walking is fun, ha 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 ha. Bounty hunting is one of many fun things you can do in Skyrim. It offers a ton of variety, and we can decide to be a law-respecting, fame-seeking warrior, or a psycho that hunts down anyone for money. But is all of this worth it? Let's find out. My personal choice is to be a somewhat lawful heavy armored warrior. If we really wanted to be a psycho, we just take assassination bounties, but that's a completely different video. Our sword will pierce through our bounty targets like a knife cuts through butter. There are four unique types of quests with bounties, and a few more specific quests that fit this roleplay. We'll take a look at our first target. Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. It seems that there are more bandits in Skyrim than there are civilians. We're tasked to eliminate one of their leaders. Once that is done, the rest should scatter and not be a problem for law-abiding citizens who want to travel. Bandits attacked and ransacked my cart. Can you help me? Four dork got ambushed. Ha 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 ha. The target leader is dead. We can collect the bounty. Excellent. You've done us a great service. Here is your reward. And do this a few more times just to see some kill cams. The Reach. If Skyrim was a house, the Reach would be the toilet. Luckily for us, this toilet is full of another nuisance for the people of Skyrim. The Forsworn. A group of Breton crazies who just won't leave anyone alone. The bounties for these assholes write themselves. Our target? A Forsworn Briarheart hiding in his little fortress. If we had a stealth build, we could just take his heart. But we're not that type of guy. As you can see, this job is a bit dangerous. Running at them like this is not a good strategy. Even as a warrior, we need to take on just a few at a time. The target is dead, but let's kill a few more. Let's leave the Reach, hopefully forever, and get another type of bounty. This time we're switching from humans to creatures. Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. Our target is a giant. We've met them a few times on this channel before. Yeah. But we're tougher, and I refuse to join the Skyrim space program with this character. Killing him doesn't seem right. These guys are practically harmless unless provoked. Let's put a pin in this. I don't want to be a psycho in this video, and there is a solution. For now, the giant is dead, and we can collect our money. Excellent. You've done us a great service. Here is your reward. I don't know if you've ever noticed this in Skyrim, but there are dragons. And with problems like these, capable of burning down villages, there needs to be someone who's a problem solver. Let's do this. This will make us rich. Excellent. You've done us a great service. Here is your reward. Oh. Yeah, dragons can continue terrorizing villages. I said I wasn't a psycho, but the hassle isn't worth the money. Subscribe to my channel if you want to get a bonus.
Escaped prisoners suck. How can you build a society when criminals freely roam the wilderness? That's why we're here. The guy just runs around like a lunatic. Not for long. <laughs> this is all a bit too violent, don't you guys think? It works well for our roleplay, but I can enhance our gameplay a bit. I usually aim to make these videos in vanilla Skyrim, but I decided to make an exception and installed the Headhunter mod for Skyrim. Remember the giant? Well, now we can just make him surrender and let him run away. Remember the bandit leader? Well, now we can simply capture him and send him to prison. The quests we've covered were radiant, and you know what that means. They get boring. The gameplay gets upgraded with this mod, and capturing people is what bounty hunters do quite frequently. We become a professional snitch, and the people will love us for it. It's important to note that being a higher level for bounty hunting is way more fun, unless you like the challenge. A lot of our targets are pretty tough, and we'd get down if we weren't strong. This character is around level 50, but anything above 30 will suffice. Honestly, we don't have to do this alone. Bounty hunting, just like treasure hunting from the previous video, can be done with a friend or follower. The only real downside is sharing the loot and rewards with them, but that's only if you want real immersion. A follower will make the fights way easier, and you can always run away and leave them to fight alone. Fork Dork is a lone wolf, so being a team player doesn't really compute. The fights can be a fun challenge and the follower adds some more variety to the gameplay. It can get pretty repetitive because again, Radiant Quests get boring. The average reward from one bounty hunt was 100 gold, which is pretty solid. The risks are pretty big though, as we fight tough enemies and can get ambushed or annihilated. I mean, it makes sense. There wouldn't be a bounty on them if they weren't tough to kill. The treasure hunter could for sure make a lot more money, but not everyone wants to dig up chests or fight tons of undead buried in the depths of Skyrim. It's important to also take into account the time spent traveling to get to the targets, and then the time spent traveling back to get the reward itself. The treasure hunter was better in this regard, because there was no middleman who had to pay us for doing the job. We just took stuff. Of course, we can always loot the bandits and monsters, so that at least balances things out. Bandit leaders' armor and weapons are great, both in terms of value or even usefulness. Giants and dragons carry a lot of gold and gear as well. We become merchants in a way, because we can also sell this loot to vendors. We're not dungeon delvers though, so there's not as much to sell. Thank the gods. Imagine fighting all of those Draugr, or traversing Dwemer ruins filled with traps, and then carrying one gazillion carry weight worth of loot. I'd rather buy one gazillion meat at the tavern, and then trash the place. You know, like an adult with obvious issues, which can only be resolved by chugging more meat. Gotta make the innkeepers happy. Speaking of innkeepers, as you've probably seen from this video, they're great for collecting bounty notes, just like stewards. The companions are great for pointing you to the previously mentioned escaped criminals. They have a few more radiant quests, but I don't think brawling with civilians is exactly bounty hunting. You do you though. You're tougher than you look. You got me, fair and square. The best thing about this roleplay is that you can have any build you like. One of my bounty hunting characters was a samurai of sorts. Fork Dork is a warrior, you can be a mage, or even a stealth archer, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 shut the f up. We circle back to the question, are you a law-abiding citizen who wants to help, or a mercenary only driven by gold? Are you a psycho who will murder any target, or a guy who will show mercy? The headhunter mod is amazing for greater immersion, as well as the previously mentioned followers. Killing everything over and over gets boring, so filling up prisons with bandit or forsworn leaders that really 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 hate you is way funnier and adds a lot to the otherwise repetitive gameplay. You can even mix this roleplay up with the treasure hunter a bit. Solstheim is filled with bandit camps and bandit leaders, you know, big and dangerous targets. The rewards from chests can be great, and there's always a bounty on their head. Somewhere, probably. I still recommend taking followers for immersion. Not at all because I'm a weak pussy sometimes. I'm adding one more bonus part to this video. You guys know Survival Skyrim isn't really my thing, but I hope to improve in the near future. Recommending a higher level for gameplay is something I did on purpose, as it implies some time for training and preparation. You can't go wrong with heavy armor, as you can't get cold as much, and the perks for weapons are really really strong fun, and immersive. I also mentioned traveling before. Survival mechanics force you to stock up on food. You can buy food in cities, travel, take care of the target, take his food, return to 
the city for the reward and repeat this process until you go insane. It's just like real life, ha 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 ha. Me and Eric decided to go on a hunt. We're gonna hunt down a giant, a very special giant. His name is Bebo. <laughs> His name is Bebo and I'm gonna be on survival and on legendary. I'd give this experience an 8 out of 10. The money is solid, the targets are challenging, but it gets repetitive pretty quickly. Unless you make it fun for yourself. We've all been bounty hunters at some point. Maybe it's about the bounties we made along the way, or some sh I don't know, this isn't that deep. <laughs> 